Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in the workshop this week, we're going to take a look at flush hinges. That's coming up next. So flush hinges, nobody's favourite hinge. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day who reckoned they were starter hinges, beginner hinges, the sort of thing you used before you knew any better and you'd move on to something else as soon as you did. There may be an element of truth in that, but I think it's more to do with the type of projects that beginner woodworkers make. Certainly a small cabinet made from a man-made board like MDF or plywood, uh, and flush hinges are particularly appropriate for that. So too are concealed hinges, Euro-style hinges, uh, but these are much more expensive. I bought this pack of 20 flush hinges, so 10 pairs for just three pounds, 30 pence a pair for these flush hinges. Walk into a store looking for concealed hinges with three pounds in your pocket, and you'll come away with just one hinge, probably without a hinge plate. So concealed hinges, uh, very, very useful, but way more money than a flush hinge. Uh, uh, before we get into the actual fitting of them, let's have a quick look at the difference between flush hinges and regular butt hinges. So with a regular sort of butt hinge like this one, the hinge is made out of two parts, two leaves, and these are equal sizes, and they join together around a central knuckle with a pin driven through it, which allows them to pivot. Uh, because of the thickness of the material and the thickness of the knuckle, these leaves have to be cut into a door or a frame, and that takes a certain amount of technique or a certain amount of tools, either with a hammer and chisel or, of course, with a router and a jig. Uh, the advantage of flush hinges, of course, is that they turn that idea on their head. Instead of having two equal sized leaves, you have a smaller leaf and a larger leaf, and when it's in its closed position, the small leaf sits inside the large leaf. That means that the thickness of the metal is the only thickness that you need to worry about, so there's no cutting in to the door. And because of that thickness, or indeed thinness, it means that the knuckle has to be offset or canted over, cranked, to keep it out of the way. So if flush hinges have so much going for them, why aren't they more widely used? Well, they are, actually. There are entire industries, uh, the window shutter industry, for example, that relies on flush hinges. Certainly, they'd be re-evaluating their installation costs if they had to cut in each of the hinges they used. Uh, but the hinges they use tend to be much better quality than these stainless steel and loose pins made to much finer tolerances than these sort of 30 pence a pair hinges. But even so, there are still things about them that can catch you out. Now, I fitted my fair share of these, especially back in the handyman days, and I've come up with a fairly foolproof way for fitting these little fellas fairly fuss-free, and that is most of the F-words I'm going to use about flush hinges. In the rest of this video, I'm going to fit a couple of doors to a couple of mock-up cabinets, and I'm going to show you the things that can catch you out as you fit these flush hinges. So when it comes to fitting doors onto cabinets, there's two types. You'll have an inset door like this one, where the door fits inside the frame or carcass, and you'll have an overlay door like this, or a flush door, where the door fits completely over the frame or the carcass. Uh, we'll start with this one. There's only a few tools that you need for this particular technique. We need a, a drill driver of some kind, and we need a, a self-centering drill bit. That's the type with a little sprung collar on it, so it stays in the center. We need a pencil, of course, for marking out. Uh, we want a sliding square, or a combination square, you might call it. Uh, we need the hinges, of course, uh, and we need some fixing and some screws as well. We'll go into each of these in detail uh, as we go through it. Let's start with the uh, overlay door and get that one fitted. So two of the most common mistakes that people make when it comes to fitting flush hinges are actually related. They choose the wrong sized hinge and they fit them the wrong way around. And there's a very good reason why they think that way. Uh, because the uh, knuckle on a flush hinge is cranked like this, uh, they're actually designed for the smallest leaf of the hinge to go on the edge of a board. Unfortunately, when you do that, certainly on an overlay door like this, it means that the knuckle of the hinge faces towards you, and that isn't particularly attractive, but that is how they're designed to work. What happens then, though, is that people try and fit a slightly smaller hinge the other way around, and what they find is that the larger leaf overhangs the board slightly. This is a 50 mil flush hinge, and that gives you a nasty sharp edge that you can catch yourself on. So then what they do, they go to the next size hinge down, which is a 40 mil, and that fits nicely uh, within the board there. But what it means is that when it comes to fitting the door, the smallest leaf has the uh, screw positions very, very close to the edge of the board. And of course, if you're only using a 16 or 18 mil door, 
uh, thickness, you can only get a 16 mil screw in there. Uh, that makes the door very, very weak. I've lost count of the number of times that I was called back to somebody's house to repair a door that had been fitted that way around. What you really want to do is get the flush hinge with the knuckle facing forwards. Uh, and again, what you want is to have the two screw holes as close to the center of that edge of the board as possible. So I've put some tape on the edge of the board to make it a little bit easier to see. And if we take our 40 mil hinge, I'm actually gonna have this the other way around. And we'll come back to that technique a little bit later on. But you can see if I mark with a Sharpie where the screw positions would be with a 40 mil hinge, it's way over to the edge of the board. If I take a 50 mil hinge, well, that's a little bit better, but it's still offset. In fact, a 60 mil hinge is much, much closer to where we want those screw positions to be. We want as much meat around those screws as possible. And a 60 mil hinge uh, with an 18 mil or three quarter inch board is just about right. Okay, thank you. so we know what size hinges we're going to be using and we know which way round they're going to go. Let's figure out where they need to be. Oops. And for this, we're going to just eyeball them roughly. Uh, bearing in mind with an overlay door, you've got the carcass underneath, so you can't have them up too high. And there's no hard and fast rule for this. We're going to position them about where we want. Then we're going to take our sliding square, our combination square, and bearing off the bottom of the carcass, we're going to take a, a measurement for the bottom of the bottom hinge. We're going to put these equidistantly. We've got our setting on our square, so we're going to mark the bottom of the bottom hinge here, and the top of the top hinge here. So the next mistake that people make is often they fit the hinge so the knuckle of the hinge bears tightly against the door or the carcass. And what you really need is a little bit of leeway from that. And I'm going to use the hinge backwards here and uh, just to show you what I mean. If you have the hinge tightly against there, then as that hinge opens and closes, that knuckle is going to bear against the side of the cabinet or against the door. And over time that will produce a black mark. At best or at worst, it'll squeak every time you use it, which is going to drive you crazy. What I like to do is pack that away slightly. You can use a one millimeter packer, but of course that's quite a lot and it brings it away from that center line quite a long way. Uh, what I prefer to do is use just a piece of P120 sandpaper abrasive. That's almost exactly half a millimeter thick and that's just enough to get that knuckle away from the side of the carcass. And with that in place, I'm using the hinge backwards here, remember, so we're just bearing against the side of the carcass to give ourselves a position. I can line up the bottom of the bottom hinge with our pencil mark. And with my self-centering drill bit, I can drill straight through and get that position just right. And then I can repeat the same thing with the top of the top hinge. So with the hinge position is marked on the carcass. We're going to flip the door over and do the same thing on the door. Continuing that pencil line around onto the inside face. And using our packing material the sandpaper, and this time we drill the three screw positions in the large leaf of the hinge. Okay, so far so good. Uh, we've got the hinge positions all marred, we've got the hinge uh, screw positions all drilled out. The next mistake that I see quite regularly is that folks use the wrong size screws to fix their hinges on. These are flush hinges, uh, they're, they're only the thickness of the metal. So if you use a screw that's too big, and these are only three and a half mil screws, the head of the screw pokes through, it actually stands proud of the surface, and if you've got that on each side, that's going to bind, that's going to kick the hinge 
away from the door and away from the carcass. That'll be messy and ugly and it won't shut properly. What you need to be doing is finding a screw that sits completely beneath that countersink. The screw holes, the fixing holes in these hinges are countersunk and you want that to be completely flush. No head showing there at all. And for this particular hinge and this particular size, I found a three mil screw to be absolutely perfect. I'm using three by 16s to fix uh, the larger leaf of the hinge onto the inside face of the door. And fairly obviously we'll also need to be using three mil screws into the carcass. And I'm actually going to be using three by 30 mil screws because I want to get those screws in really deep, get them in a long way. Now you've got to be careful, especially with man-made boards like MDF, that you don't split them. So I've drilled these out with a pilot hole. And then I can offer up the door. We've got the positions already marked. So they'll go straight in from that. It's the easy way to fit flush hinges. Obviously flush hinges you need a catch of some kind on this, unlike, say, the concealed uh, Euro-style kitchen cabinet hinges. Uh, and we'll come on to that uh, in a future video. So that's the overlay door with the inset door. The process is very similar. Uh, we've got the door wedged in position inside the carcass. Uh, so we've got a nice even gap all the way around. Then we can take our sliding square just as before and mark the bottom of the bottom hinge and the top of the top hinge. Then we extend those lines around onto the inside faces and the inside edge. Then we can use our flipped over hinge as a template with our self-centering drill bit and drill out the screw positions uh, on the edge of the door and then on the inside face of the carcass. As before we fix the hinge to the door and then the door to the frame so we drill a pilot hole into the door so we can accommodate our 30mm by 3mm screws. And then we can fix the hinges to the inside face of the cabinet using 3 by 16 mil screws. So there we are, that's a nice simple little fuss-free way for fitting flush hinges quickly and easily, both inset oops, and overlay. Uh, there'll be another video where we talk about uh, fitting catches to these. Uh, but that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you're around uh, next weekend, next weekend will be Makers Central here in the UK uh, at Birmingham NEC. Myself and my podcast co-host Andy Mack, Gosseth Honeyman on YouTube of course, will be at Stand G25 all weekend. Uh, if you're in the area, if you're in the show, come and say hi, uh, get a selfie with us and, uh, and have a chat because it'd be lovely to meet you. Uh, but that's it for this week. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time or at the NEC, whichever comes first. Take care.